Let f of x be equal to x squared minus 4, g of x be equal to the square root of x, and h of x be equal to 0 if x is less than or equal to 2, and x minus 2 if x is greater than 2. Find expressions for the following functions and give the domain in each case, and there's 8 functions to find. Well, before I actually figure out any of the functions and their domains, it's probably a good idea to figure out the domains of f, g and h first, because I'll need to use them to find the domains of these other um, composite functions. So let's see. The domain of f, uh, well I can put anything into f, it's just x squared minus 4, so that's just the real numbers. Okay. The domain of g, uh, g is the square root of x, I can only put positive numbers in there, I can't do the square root of minus 1 if it's a real valued function. So uh, that would be um, from 0 to infinity, including 0, that's a square bracket there. And the domain of h, well if we look closely we can see that h is defined if x is less than or equal to 2, and it's defined if x is greater than 2, so h is defined everywhere as well. Okay, that's a good place to start. Now we can actually do the questions. A, f plus g, alright. Well, f plus g is the function that you make by adding um, the formula for f and the formula for g separately. So let's see f plus g of x is f of x plus g of x um, and f of x is x squared minus 4 and g of x is root x so that one wasn't hard what about the domain well I need to be able to do both of these functions so I can only do f of x if x is in R I can only do g of x if x is in this set here from 0 to infinity. So that means that my domain of f plus g is from 0 to infinity because g has to be defined. Okay, so what's next? B b is g on f b g on f well g on f of x would be g of x on f of x okay and now to find the domain of that oh well, i have to actually write the formula so g of x is the square root of x, and f of x is x squared minus 4. So, that's an expression for g on f of x, and now to do the domain we need to investigate when this is possible. So, we'll only be able to do it when both g and f are defined, um, and g of x is only defined here. So our domain so far... is uh, from 0 to infinity. That's what it looks like so far. Alright, and uh, we can't have f of x being 0 because it's on the bottom of a fraction, so we can't have this being 0. So x squared minus 4 can't be 0, so it'll be undefined when that's 0, and I'm going to need some more space to find my domain unfortunately. So let's start a new page. So let's just write down uh, g on f is undefined when f of x is equal to 0, uh, which is when x squared minus 4 is equal to 0, which is when x squared is equal to 4, which is when x is equal to plus or minus 2. So the domain of g on f 
um, has to be all the places where g is defined and f is defined, which we figured out already was from 0 to infinity, except all the places where um, f is 0, so except the set with 2 and minus 2. And I suppose we could probably write that in interval notation if we wanted. Let's just have a look at the graph of this interval. So we've got uh, minus 2 and 2 and 0 and we want this bit but not this bit and not this bit. So since minus 2 isn't even in that set anyway we just get um, the interval from 0 to 2 and the interval from 2 to infinity. That's the domain of f on uh, g on f. All right. The next one was uh, f of g. C f of g. Well, f of g of x is f of g of x. So in the formula for f, which was um, x squared minus 4, instead of x we put g of x. And g of x is really root x. So that's just x minus 4. Now for the domain, it looks like just looking at this formula that it's defined everywhere. But remember that this function is still f of g. Um, we're thinking of it as having been made from f and g, so in order to do it, we have to be able to do g first, because we do this before we square it. So in order to do it, we have to do g first, which means g has to be defined, which means we're only allowed to be in the domain of g first. So, we have that the domain of f of g is from 0 to infinity. Because g has to be defined first and then you do f on the answer. Alright, now for part d. So in part d I want to do g of f. Well g of f of x is g of f of x. And so I do the function g on the answer from f of x. So I'll get the square root of x squared take 4. Like that. So first let's uh, look at when g, when f is defined. f is always defined so we don't have to worry about that. And then after that we have to decide whether g is defined on the answers that come out of f. So g will only be defined if f is in the domain of g, so if f is greater than or equal to 0. So let's uh, write that down. g of f of x is defined when f of x is in the domain of g. So f of x is greater than or equal to 0, so x squared is minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0, so x squared is greater than or equal to 4. So we square root both sides, we get plus or minus x is greater than or, greater than or equal to 2, so either x is greater than or equal to 2, or minus x is greater than or equal to 2, which is x is less than or equal to minus 2. So, i.e., x is in this set from minus infinity to minus 2. That's this part here. Union from 2 to infinity. That's this part here. Sorry about that. Let me draw my 2 again. Okay, so 
so the domain of g of f is equal to minus infinity minus 2 union to infinity. Alright, now for the next one. E f minus h of x. Well that would be f of x minus h of x which would be x squared minus 4 minus, oh dear, h of x has got a really strange definition. Um, well, I guess it would be minus 0 for the bit where um, it's defined to be 0. And it would be x squared minus 4 minus x minus 2 if x is greater than 2. So that's what it would be. So whatever the answer is for h, which is this bit here, I subtract it off of the answer for f, which is this bit here. Alright. So that would be equal to x squared minus 4 if x is less than or equal to 2. And x squared minus 4 minus x plus 2 would be x squared minus x minus 2 if x is greater than 2. OK. So that's um, the formula. All we need is the domain now. Well, for the domain, we need both f and h to be defined separately, and both f and h are defined for all r. So the domain of f minus h is r. f. OK. h times g of x. Well, that would be h of x times g of x. OK, so again, we get the answers from h of x, which are 0 if x is less than or equal to 2, and x take 2 if x is greater than 2, and we multiply it by g of x, which is root x, like that. OK, um, and so that formula would come out like this, 0 if x is less than or equal to 2, and x minus 2 root x if x is greater than 2. And then for the domain, we need both h and g to be defined separately. h is defined for all of r, and g is only defined if x is greater than or equal to 0. So, oh, before I write that down, look. I've written x is less than or equal to 2, which implies that it could be anything less than 0. So I really should change that to... Uh, to reflect the fact that I can't put in anything less than 0. So it's if um, 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2, like that. And I should probably change it up here as well, because g of x isn't actually defined um, if x is less than 0. So 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. And that reflects our domain, actually, because our domain is everything from 0 upwards, and I've got from 0 to 2, and then from 2 on. So the domain of h times g is from 0 to infinity. OK. Part g. Almost there f of h of x, which is f of h of x. So what I do is I get the answers from h of x, which are 0 if x is less than or equal to 2, and x minus 2 if x is greater than 2, and then I do f on those answers, so f on those answers. And so that would be x uh, 0 squared minus 4, which is minus 4, 
if x is less than or equal to 2. And it would be x minus 2 squared minus 4. If x is greater than 2, and I'll just expand that out just for completeness's sake. If x is less than or equal to 2, so if I expand that out, I'll get x squared minus 4x plus 4 minus 4. And I think my reader will understand that I just expanded it out. So I'll leave those bits off if x is greater than 2. So that's my formula. So what do I do next? I need the domain. All right, so for this to work, we need h to be defined and h is defined for all r, and then we need f to be defined on whatever the answers are from h. So f is always defined for anything anyway as well, so our domain is just r. Domain of f of h is all of the real numbers. And that just leaves part h. h of f x is equal to h of f of x. So I get the answer to f of x and I do h on that answer. That doesn't seem so easy for h. But the other way around is to say I get h if x is less than or equal to 2 and x take 2 if x is greater than 2. That's h. I get h and I put f of x everywhere there's an x. That's what you do when you sub things into a formula. If I put in h of 3, I'd put 3 wherever there was an x. So f of x here, f of x here, f of x here. Okay, so that's equal to uh, before I go writing extra things, I think I might figure out what to do with this first. So f of x is less than or equal to 2 implies uh, that x squared minus 4 is less than or equal to 2, x squared is less than or equal to 6, so plus or minus x is less than or equal to root 6. So that would be um, x is less than or equal to root 6. And minus x is less than or equal to root 6, which is x is greater than or equal to minus root 6, so like this. Okay, so therefore, therefore, h of f, is equal to 0 if uh, minus root 6 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to root 6 and um, x squared minus 4 minus 2 so that would be x squared minus 6 if uh, x is not there, so I think instead of writing an if, I might just write the word otherwise to cover everything else. Otherwise. And now we just need the domain. So for f of h, so for h of f of x to be defined, f of x need to be defined first, and f is always defined for anything in R. And then h needs to be defined on the answers, and h is always defined for anything in R. So we don't have to worry. Our domain must be of h of f must be R. And that is the end of the question.